Users typically begin their process analysis within timeline here in the process view. Now, this is just one of 25 plus different analytical tools that has been purpose built to answer specific types of process related questions. Each one pre configured out of the box such that very little configuration from the end user is ever necessary. Now, within the primary path view, we've got the ability to iterate through the different possible process variations adding complexity as we go and you'll notice each of the charts to the right filter and scope to show me more data as I include more possible process variants here on the left. Now within the primary path view we've also got the milestone view which allows the user to create a custom schema based on the events from their process flow that they're interested in analyzing for. We can also get a look at how throughput is visualized as a part of any given model. So you visualize as the, as the circles go through, these are the cases, so they speed up, slow down, bunch up, back up, creating visual bottlenecks. We get an idea as to where we might have throughput or efficiency concerns. Next, let's move into the path analysis, which shows us all the different process variations and behaviors right now sorted with, to the left here, the most commonly executed sequence of steps. But as you go to the right, you see more and more interesting and obscure pathways or behaviors. I have the ability to compare every given pathway here based on a number of metrics, including risk, average time to complete, as well as cost to the business. Right, so how is my bottom line affected based on the execution pattern that we send our cases down? Next, I want to move into our side-by-side -side comparison. This gives us the ability to benchmark cases one against another. All right, so what we're looking at here on the left side are our baseline metrics prior to making any process change. Pre-implementation. Since we've made a change and we post implementation, how have we fared? How have these metrics trended over time? So this gives you a very clear, concise feedback as to whether or not the changes that were made, be it automation, be it re-engineering or retraining your folks, other types of, of software implementations, are they hitting the mark? Should we go forward with these changes or is it time to tweak our efforts? And this is very important. It's almost an insurance policy on your go forward strategies. From here, let's move into our timelines view. This shows us the most granular detail we have. Each case is shown here with the icons representing the stages that have occurred along the way. If I have a need to go down to the single case level, I can bring up my timeline view and now I'm looking at the, uh, the history of case number X. All the interrelated steps across all the data inputs that we might have, the time gaps where costs were incurred, I've got attributional level data available to me here so if I have a need to go to that level I can do that. Now if I want to filter down and scope based on very specific scenarios that I have questions about within my workflow, our query module allows you to do that in a very granular detailed manner totally done here within the UI. Right, So there's never any code written anywhere within the tool. What you can see here is I've built a very specific question that asks how often have we missed a coverage confirmation step? This never happened. But we went on to issue a rental car on an insurance claim, as that's the use case we have here. That claim was then in turn denied before the rental car coming back, but it took longer than four days before that, that claimant returned the actual rental car after the, the denial notice. There's tons of logic here and conditions that you would just build out as if you were speaking them out loud. And I can very quickly go on and search, and it will show me the number of cases that very specifically fit my my logic that I just, and all within a sub-second response time. Now going along with query, we've also got our protocol. So I'm clearing out all of my filters. I'm going to show you our protocol mechanism. This allows us to build process rules or expectations, our SLAs. And for each one of these, we would expect that our rule would be followed. Now we'd be concerned if we had violations. And so we can go back and look at historically how cases have missed or violated any expectation we had. Very specifically showing us whether a step was missed, we had a time violation, something happened out of order, etc. And scope down to just those. But in, in the in the 
the name of being more proactive, I might want to set up my alert, my protocols, to trigger an alerting mechanism, such that as I load new data over time, I can then notify either humans and or downstream third-party software to begin to be, remediate any issue that's uncovered prior to us having uh, an issue downstream. Okay, so set up your protocol, launch the alerts, text somebody, kick off a web a web hook that triggers some downstream application to trigger a, a, an RPA or uh, spawn a BPM process, open a service ticket, whatever the next steps towards troubleshooting that issue might be. Okay, from here, let's look at our simulation capabilities. So with simulation, we can build in certain variables that allow us to ask questions of how, how, about how our process might operate based on certain conditions that could be changing, allowing us to shoot for that most ideal end state we saw with that side-by-side, -side, that post-implementation scenario. Let's try to get as close as we can to, to positive results when it's taking time out of the process, dropping costs. We can modify exactly how the process is executed, how long it takes, right, and see exactly how what the end results might be from the metrics that we care most about. Two more features I want to touch on, one being the task mining. Now with task mining, we're taking data at a click level off of the end user desktop, building out logs, and allowing us to analyze at a very detailed level to understand what is our best candidate for automation at it from a task component. Right, so allowing us to compare and contrast all the different things that our end users might be doing on their desktop that we don't have uh, a, a log for, a la the process mining uh, analysis, and compare and contrast based on time, based on complexity, based on dollar saves, to really prioritize the opportunities that we go after and, again, ensure the best end result for our automation opportunities. The last thing to touch on here is our predictive forecasting analysis. Knowing as early on in a process life cycle what the possible outcome might be. Okay, So understanding that we might have a negative end result is useful, but it's more useful when we understand very early on in the process so that we can step in and try to initiate a change to stop that end result from occurring or prepare for that end result. So this forecast capability uses machine learning neural network models to use the historical data and, and allow you to alert folks as early on in the process as is possible when we're confident that one or more outcomes might occur.